everyone. Welcome to today's live feed. Melissa is going to be joining me right away here. If you have not been to our channel before, we do um, edited videos and content, but today we thought we'd do this one live because, uh, well, heck, why not? So the mission today, the goal is to go through this. A while back, we mentioned that we found this 1860s recipe book, and Melissa was planning on doing some uh, reading on it or maybe make some recipes for her, for her channel, uh, which is just Melissa Archibald on YouTube. She hasn't done that yet. She still might. But I was looking through it today, as I often do through things, and I noticed at the back there was a whole bunch of, like, gossipy kind of tips on relationships. Um, there was uh, household hints. Household hints for busy housewives. Uh, and I was reading through it and I was fascinated. And so I thought you guys might think that it's pretty cool too. Um, so today, oh, hello. She <laughs> Why, was, hello. Were you busy being a busy housewife? I couldn't find a device that had some battery life on it to my to check out comments. Uh, allow, <laughs> allow me to provide some tips for you. Okay. Okay, yeah, and, and survive through that, because uh, I'm sure all wives like being given household tips from their husband on how to how to live, and I would <laughs> not survive the night, I don't think. But um, I thought we'd go through, because there's probably some stuff in here that we don't know, or maybe that we forgot. Maybe we can discover some stuff that uh, they did back in the olden days. I don't think they talked like that, did they? Like they were, you know, Ebenezer Scrooge or the ghost of Jacob Mark. Whoa, I'm from the 1800s. He had a time machine. I don't think that's how they talk. But <laughs> there, was, there must have been a column in this paper that they read. It was all kind of uh, useful information for uh, busy housewives. Not those lazy ones. Only for busy ones. Um, so, should I, do you want me to read some of the tips off? Sure. <coughs> okay. I'm just trying to sign in. Okay, Melissa's busy signing in right now. Hope you guys are all doing well, by the way, too. And, um, if you are... I was not prepared. ...joining us, uh, Melissa's gonna moderate, and, um, I guess you'll probably throw in your, your two bits worth of what you think. My two bits! <laughs> you know I will. Yeah, I know you will. Uh, okay. So, I'm gonna read off a, a couple tips. This is, uh, dated 1869. Somewhere in here, the date's in here. So you know that I'm not ma making this up. I'm gonna try and find it. Incidentally, there's a whole bunch of recipes at the front of this book. It seems like they just ate a lot of meat and salt back in the olden days. Um, there is homemade horseradish, that's kind of cool. I think that's Why cool. am I so little down here? Are you sitting up farther? No, I'm just sitting but up. Look at, I look like you're just little. Well, that's because I'm taller than you. I don't think This is one that I could have used like when I was in Niagara Falls, the hiccup cure. That's, uh, I mentioned that one before, that's a uh, lump of sugar saturated with, with vinegar. Apparently it's a cure for the hiccups. Well, you need to try it. I need to try a lump of, I don't Are have hiccups right now. No. What if you take a hiccup <laughs> cure and you don't have the hiccups? Ugh, I think, I mean, that's just like um, salad dressing. Uh, sugar and vinegar, Dave said I, I love horseradish. Okay, here we go. Let's read, um, I feel like I need my reading glasses. He doesn't mm. have reading. <laughs> <laughs> like a fireplace, like like uh, Masterpiece Theater. Uh, you guys, I don't know if you remember that or not. The guy would like read a story and then it would turn into like a movie of the week. That's what this, that's what this is going to be right now. Um, okay. Uh, useful information for busy housewives. Tip number one. All spots of mud on dresses may be removed by rubbing a raw potato on your dress. So if you get mud on your dress or your clothing, just go find yourself a raw potato and just on that stain. Wow, all of that. <laughs> and then wow. you can eat it. I feel like that, I, I just, I don't get it. When you cut a potato like on a white cutting board, it leaves behind, uh, it oxidizes into like a gray brown. Sludge. Sl yeah, so why wouldn't it turn your dress Brown. Maybe it maybe it smudges all the potato gook into the rest of the dress. So you can't tell where the stain was. Yeah. So it says uh, anyway. It says if you get mud on a dress, you can remove it by rubbing a raw potato on it. Who knew? Um, let's see. Oh, leather goods. Here we go. Leather goods <laughs> can be freshened up by rubbing well with the white of an egg with a piece of soft cloth. So if you uh, if your shoes ain't looking so spiffy, I guess just crack an egg. Eat the eat the yolk. I'm not yolking, folks. 
Uh, you can eat the yolk and then just use the egg white with a cloth and just rub it all over. Who knew? I didn't. I wouldn't have thought of doing that. Uh, I need to make sure you hear Amy Wright said, "Got mud? Use a spud." Yeah, <laughs> spud busters. Um, let's see. Uh, I'm trying. To, some of them is like um, to renew white satin. Soak in warm soapy water using white curd soap. Rub the soil parts very gently. Shake out the water, but do not wring. I don't know if they said it that intensely, but I am. Do not wring. Draw across a very hot, clean iron until quite dry. Uh, oh, here's this is a handy tip right here. Um, it says right there that the peel of potatoes when dried in the oven will light the fire quickly instead of wood, thus saving expense and being a far more healthy way of getting rid of the peel rather than putting it in the dustbin. Ha 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 ha. Don't put that potato peel in the dustbin, folks. Just heat it up till it's dry and you can use it as kindling, right? I feel like I want to try this hack. It will, at very least, it's gonna smell like french fries. <laughs> that would, maybe that's how they discovered potato skins. Like somebody accidentally had some cheese in there and it fell on top and they're like, well, I was gonna make some kindling, but I'm gonna eat that thing. And they're like, this is delicious. I saw on a, a channel that they took the potato skins after they peeled the potatoes and they fried them like french fries and they were like, potato skin fries. Yeah, you just gotta wash it real good, I guess. Yeah. So lots of uses for potatoes back then. <laughs> Apparently that was like, what what do you own in 1869? What are your what are your main properties? You probably have a house, you own an egg and a potato. And so there's gonna be a lot of stuff here um, about cleaning and making stuff with potatoes. Oh, here's one that I thought was, um, you know, maybe one, I don't think I would try that. It's called, it's the black straw hats. So if your black straw hat is uh, looking a little brown and dull from the sun, why simply cover it in shoe polish and it'll look good as new. I can only imagine somebody tried that and it pro probably left a big black ring around their head or the, the guy does it and then sits back on his furniture and the wife's like, no, he's like, but I read it in your magazine. Thank you very much, Funky Aardvark. Yeah. He said, good to see you being full of joy. Hi to the whole family. I, I think that shoe polish was probably different back then because they said let completely dry and then put a second coat on. I think it was just really thin black paint. Either way, shoe polish on a straw hat seems like a hot mess to me. I don't think I would do that. Carrie said they have a cookbook with a recipe for squirrel stew. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here we go. Um, had squirrel. When you're making your pigeon pies, as I'm sure many of you are right now, given the uh, lack of access to human beings and going to grocery stores, maybe you're just eating the birds that are foraging in your backyard. So uh, one pound of flour, one pound of lard, a teaspoon of salt, rub these well together, then take one pound of dough, there you go, uh, and then stick a pigeon inside of it. <laughs> it doesn't say that, but it's for a pigeon pie. Uh, it's then ready for use. It makes a delicious pastry for pigeon or fruit pies. If I had my choice and I went to, if I had a time machine, like if Doc was like, we got the time machine, the DeLorean's all ready to go, but we're going back to 1865. And I stopped at someone's house and first they weren't like all, like, is he wearing Air Jordans? Cause they would know what those are back then. Um, if they offered me pie, I would go for the fruit pie versus the one made from pigeons, which are essentially the rats of the sky. Um, now that said, a lot of people eat squab, and I'm not dissing, yes, I am dissing on that. That seems a little gross to me, because pigeons well, seem we, kind of- to be fair, we've never tried it. No, I guess but we- But I have had, uh, I almost said poultry geist, I have not had that. Poultry geist? <laughs> Is that when you get haunted by a, a chicken? <laughs> That's poultry geist? <laughs> Oh my gosh. <laughs> Just what things very low to the ground keep falling over. Partridge. Oh my gosh. You've had partridge? Yeah, partridge or a prairie chicken. I have had that. And it does have like a wild, a gamey chicken taste. So Was it I'm partridge with pear? Mm -hmm. Partridge in a pear tree. Um, I find this kind of fun. Not bad, but. Uh, parsnip fritters. Well, the fritter part sounds all right. Uh, parsnip fritters might not be too bad. Um, <laughs> look, 1869 recipe for macaroni and cheese. And guess what, folks? It's macaroni, cheese, and butter. It's pretty much exactly the same stuff we'd be eating yeah, nowadays. it's just the same recipe. Uh, that one wasn't uh, overly as exciting. There's all kinds of stuff like um, when your uh, smoked, you know, when your smoke rim globes on your oil lantern start to get dirty, uh, simply uh, soak in warm soda water with ammonia and uh, use soapy flannel and rinse with clean water. There you go. There's a roast rabbit. Um, have you ever had rabbit? Here's, okay. Sweetheart? No. Never? K German, it's Kanikian, right? No, it's Hassan. Oh, Hassan, yeah. Mm. Hassan pfeffer would be rabbit but, pepper, right? Mm -hmm. Like in, in Laverne and Shirley, they're like, Hassan pfeffer incorporated, that just this rabbit pepper. 
but they don't. I don't incorporated. Know, it would be like Peppered Rabbit. Peppered Rabbit Incorporated. That's where Laverne and Shirley worked. Was it Peppered Rabbit Incorporated? I had I had chicken. I had rabbit before, and I had no clue I was having it. It was it legit tasted like chicken. Like I had it in Germany. It was it was really good. I had it here. It was not so good. <laughs> hmm. Uh, thrift. Here's just some general advice. Save your time by learning to do the right thing at the right time and in the best, easiest, and shortest way possible. Like that sentence. Save your strength in the same way and also by using labor-saving machines, take at least a few minutes rest. That's all you got. You busy housewives back in the old days, you can take like three minutes. You get at least, I don't know, we'll grant you two or three minutes because we know that, you know, you're going to be run off your feet all day long because you have 42 children and probably a whole farm that you have to take care of. Um, Nowadays, somebody's like, you have three kids? I'm like, what? <laughs> Make it a pleasure for the children to help mother instead of a duty. That's the, they, you said duty. Oh, I said duty. You're so <laughs> immature. Um, like they're already saying like, we know that you, like not your one child, your many children. Um, so have your kids help you. Uh, save your patience. You may need it some time when greater than the present trials surround you. And if you keep losing it all in part every day, you can never get it together again. They knew that housewives were going crazy back then, I guess. People go crazy all the time. They've been going crazy for hundreds of years. If you had like 14 kids in the middle of a field and you're picking rocks all day to keep your farm going, you're probably like at the end of your rope. It said, don't, don't you know, take two to three minutes for yourself. That's generous. Thank you very much, mama. Uh, oh, here's one. When making coffee, add a little salt. This makes the coffee clear immediately. I don't know what that means. Coffee clear? Is that just maybe the flavor? Maybe. I don't know. My, apparently, my, my grandfather, who I, I never met my grand, my mom's dad, uh, used to put a pinch of salt in his coffee. Anybody else do that? Put a pinch of salt in your coffee grounds? Um, let's see. Steel ornaments may be preserved from rust when not in use by keeping them in powdered starch. So I guess if you have powdered starch. Have that... you ever had barbecued black bear? No. <laughs> no I've had blackberries, but I've never I had black bear. That would, would probably taste a little gamey. I feel that too. You can tell, I don't know, I'm sure at least one of you has smelled a black bear before. You can tell mm. when there's a bear near you because it smells like a moldy blanket is coming your way. Yeah, a musty, gross blanket. <laughs> okay, this is what they did. It says if milk, 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 you know, you know what I mean? That stuff that comes out of a cow. You get chocolate milk out of a brown cow. Um, but it says if milk boils over or anything else has been spilt on the stove and a suffocating smoke arises causing an unpleasant smell, it may be dispelled by sprinkling the spot with a little common salt. Not uncommon salt. Just whatever common salt you have around. So I guess the, you could get the, the stain and the smell out of the, the stove top by rubbing salt on it. I think this is kind of cool. You, could still, you, you still use salt to like clean cast iron pans and everything with a potato. It said, it okay. It smells like skunk cape. Yeah. This is another egg one. So far, we've had many potato and egg things. So here's another egg one. Save your eggshells. And I'll, look, I'll, I'm read. this is me holding the book up so you know that I'm reading. You're so close to my face. This is me holding. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not trying to <laughs> stick. Well, I'm not trying to stick it in. Okay, I'm going to read. Save your eggshells and use stick. them to clean bottles, vinegar cruets, and carafes. Put the shells away in a convenient box, and when ready to wash the bottles, crush the shells up fine, partly fill the bottles with them, pour over them hot soap suds, shake well, and then rinse. I guess they're just using it as like an aggregate, like an aggressive sort of cleaning thing. This is why women only had two minutes a day, because they were using eggs for everything. When your wheelbarrow breaks, simply combine rotted eggshells into a form and mold it into a new wheel. It doesn't say that, but boy, we're just about... Um, Let's see. There's all kinds of neat stuff in here. Lots of, lots of, th they're really concerned with how to wash things and how to make food. That's pretty much all this is. We've, I don't think we can get kangaroo meat here. Oh. Right? Okay, no, I don't think so. Um, I think, Matthew. Hi, Matthew. Okay, first <laughs> off, how many people had a canary back in the old days that they have a section in here on just maintenance of your canary? <laughs> Uh, your canary, you know, your canary, like pff, your canary. That's one thing I wouldn't have thought. Another time machine thing. You go back in time and everybody's got a canary in their house. Is that what was going on? 
I don't know. Like, well, what did it say about canaries? That was well, really I'll tell you, but to me, like for it to be in a newspaper at the time, it must have been common enough. It doesn't say if you have a canary. Look, it's not if you have a canary, it's what to do for your canary. It's like clearly you have multiple children and you have a canary. Yeah. So uh, this, is, this is how to take care of your canary. Never let a birdcage hang in a room where the gas is alight unless it is exceptionally well ventilated. Well, that's a given. Don't gas your canary. That's a bad thing to do. Eggshells in the garden will stop slugs. That's good. I'm putting them near my lettuce then. <laughs> uh, the air near the ceiling is always the most impure at night. Make a rule of always setting, you know, I'm not, I guess they call a bird a dicky? Always setting Dickie's cage on the table at night. How do they know what you're going to name your canary? That's just, pff, I would pick a different name for my canary. I'll have you know. I guess that's some uncommon vernacular now. But at the time, you know, when you have your canary, you got to put the dickie on the table. That's all there is to it. <laughs> I'm not meaning to sound bad. That's actually what it says right there. Right there. See? Just because it says something doesn't mean you need to Well, read I'm it. reading and I'm trying to be truthful. Um, after the gas has been alight some time, put your own head near the ceiling and see how you would like to sleep in such an atmosphere. Yeah, if your house is filled with poisonous gases and you have a canary who doesn't like it, just hang your head up in the ceiling for a while and see if you also pass out from the gases. <laughs> That's pretty harsh, 1869 newspaper writer. Wow. I'm like the canary in our house. Alexander has terrible sense of smell. It will reek like gas or anything from the garage and I'm the first one to smell it. Mm. Yeah, that's true. She has... Although I don't die from it anymore. Really good <laughs> smeller. But I can vent us really fast. Okay, here we go. Um, here's another. <laughs> here's a life hack here. Because um, a life hack for canary might not be that uh, that helpful. Here's what, what to do with stale bread. Stale bread will, will clean silk dresses. You see that? Uh, so if you have stale bread, apparently you can clean specifically kid gloves and silk dresses. So who knew? I'll be rubbing our stale bread all over your clothes. I'm sure Melissa's gonna love that. You know, your fine silk tops and dresses that are around. I'm gonna get some stale bread. We're gonna fix them right up. Hmm. If a chimney be on fire. Oh, I, I feel like I have to say this in old. If a chimney be on fire, throw kitchen salt on the fire and close the windows and doors of the room. That way you will be entrapped. No, it doesn't say that part, but it does wow. say, if your chimney catches on fire to throw kitchen salt on the fire and close the windows, doors of the room. I suppose that cuts off the oxygen to the room, but uh, then somebody walks in and it creates like that, uh, what's it called, that backdraft? That'd be bad. And you'd be covered in salt, which wouldn't feel good. Oh, oil paintings should not be hung over the mantelpiece as if they are, they are very apt to wrinkle with the heat and get covered in really gross soot. How many antique paintings do you see on like Antiques Roadshow or something when they're like, you know, this painting would clean right up. And then they have that little Q-tip with whatever magical solvent is on it. And they spend five hours cleaning one spot. And they're like, ta-da! I'd be like to clipping that thing into the car wash. Like taking the scrubber and just pressure wash it. Yeah, that'd be a lot faster. I probably shouldn't be dealing with antiques if I actually did that. I'm not going to, but um, let's see. Feed your bamboo chairs. The pretty and inexpensive bamboo furniture, so much used now, requires to be treated differently from the ordinary wooden furniture as bamboo is liable to crack and come apart. It must be fed. Nom, nom, nom. So as to counteract the ill effects of dryness in the room. The furniture should be exposed to the air whenever possible. Do not place near a fire and it should be rubbed regularly with equal parts of linseed oil and turpentine. Now hopefully you don't have that next to your fireplace rubbing turpentine all over the place. Then you'd have to throw salt on your fire. Put that out. Uh, wash in cold water followed by thorough drying. So, boy, people must have like absorbed a lot of chemicals through their body back then. And eggs. Probably a lot of eggs too. There was one in here that I want to get to. Um, this is like a weird story time. That's right. <laughs> I think it's... Once upon a time. Okay, here... No, oh, it's interesting because it's all... Okay, here's... Here, I'm going to read a little recipe to you. Um, some of them look okay. Gravy soup, uh, one six one and six pence gallon worth of gravy soup. Uh, but here's here's a little tasty number right there. It's for eel soup. Now eel is eaten. Of course, if you go to a sushi place, you can order unagi, and um, that's eel. It's not bad. I used to like it. I kind of don't like it so much now. Um, eel pie. Mm, mm, mm. 
Mmm, again, I would take the fruit pie every day. Eel pie. Skin, draw, and cleanse two good-sized eels. Where do these people live where they have access to eels and eggs and cows? Like, what kind of farm do you have where you have an eel infestation or you can just buy eels at the... Where would you even somewhere. buy an eel? Yeah, but that's just us. Like, for sure, they have to have eels somewhere. We got in... Oh, hang on. I know where they found eels. Because the, the place where this book is from is written in here. In the front. I hear, like, the spine cracking. That's Ooh. my spine. Uh, this book is from, okay, now that I'm looking for it, I can't find it. Horses. Horses. Yeah, leg lotion. Oh, there's all kinds of remedies in here too. I guess that was a really common thing to do is have your remedies and so forth. Uh, this book is from, from overseas, it's from England. At the Good Eel store, Amy said. Okay, anyway, I'm gonna, I'll come back to that in a bit. I'll I didn't, find didn't out even think to look from. at the comments, you guys. Uh, okay, know. so eel pie. Skin, draw, and cleanse two good-sized eels. I think any, wouldn't any size eel be good enough? Trim off the fins and cut them in pieces about three inches long. Put them into a stew pan with two ounces of butter, some chopped mushrooms, parsley, and a very little shallot. Nutmeg, pepper, salt, two glasses of sherry, one of, one of Harvey sauce? What's Harvey sauce? Harvey sauce? Was it a guy named Harvey who lived in the... I'm sure that it's probably some kind of special... Yeah, like mm, meat. Yeah. Like, like... What's it? Oh, uh, that's Arby's. <laughs> well, there's a Harvey's hamburger plate. And barely enough water to cover the surface of the eels. Because you don't want eels to get oversaturated in water. Eel tastes just like chicken, said Frederick. Yeah. Um, to the sauce... Uh, oh, plates, place them in a pie dish. That's important. To the sauce, add a quantity of flour, stir it into the fire to thicken, and the juice of a lemon, pour the sauce over the eel in the pie dish, place some hard-boiled eggs on the top, and cover it all with a puff this paste. This one has eels and eggs. Orna ornament the top, egg it over, and bake for an hour. Serve either hot or cold. You've had a hard day work in the field. You come inside, and your wife's been working hard. What has she got for you? Pie. Are you excited? Oh, I love my fruits pie. But what does she make today? Eel pie and pigeon pie. Which would you prefer? Would you like some cold eel or some cold pigeon? I'm sure it's delicious when you don't have other options. But given the fact that... Okay, are you feeling defensive for the 1800s woman that had to do yeah. this? What about people that eat eel now or squab now? Well, I don't know. It doesn't sound... Okay, I'm saying that if well, you Well, that went, pie doesn't sound very good, <clears> but I imagine it to be like gray, slimy, and gross. Like. Yeah, but nowadays, if you went to like a hamburger joint and you're like, I'm going to get my burger, my milkshake, and a pie, and that rotisserie glass thing that you imagine in the 1950s, it's not going around with a chunk of eel fin sticking out of it with like a, you want some ice cream? You want some vanilla ice cream I, on top of that? I've offended so many people by saying that I don't like anything seafoody at all. So I don't, I mean, I dislike seafood to the point where I don't even mind that it offends people because it's just so awful to me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, we'll do a couple more tips. I'm going to get into this one about the ring finger thing. That's pretty cool. Um, cause it's, it's traditions I didn't even know existed anymore. Eel burgers are the new craze. Um, okay. Ink. Here we go. Look, it's written. So it is fact from the 1800s. Ink that is freshly spilt upon a carpet should be once covered with common salt or Indian meal. If this does not absorb all the stain, rub with a little lemon juice. And another thing I saw that, uh, they said to put milk on it to remove it. Again, these people are just throwing anything they had sitting around at whatever problem they had. Why, your husband's head has fallen off in a harvesting accident? Well, throw some salt and an eel at him. That ought to fix it right up. Um, let's see. Uh, when velvet gets crushed from pressure, hold the parts over a basin of hot water with the lining of the article next to the water. The pile will soon rise and the velvet look nearly new again. So for all of you folks, you know those velvet incidents that you have? Maybe your velvet painting in your house has gotten a little crushed from crazy parties in the 1970s. You just need a basin of hot water um, and you're gonna be good as new. Yeah. Um, and yes, I say milk this way. Milk, milk. I had you fresh ahi in, uh, in Maui. Okay. <laughs> that wasn't super great, no. Oh, you didn't like it either, I forgot but I mm. really like the guava. I would go back to Hawaii completely just for fresh <laughs> guava. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> uh, let's see, to render shoes waterproof, warm up a little beeswax and mutton until it's liquid and then rub some of it slightly over the sides of the sole where the stitches are. So no, I guess if no. you fix your shoe. This I thought was kind of cool. So see this image right here, that one? That's telling you what the different <laughs> rings mean 
uh, if you're wearing a ring on your finger, what it means. And you can see there's multiple rings, and I'm gonna tell you what that means. So we all know this, our third finger over, that's the wedding ring. If you got that on your finger, oh, they're married, or yay, they're married. But anyway, you see that, and then your spouse has one that looks kind of the same. Are you trying to get me to show Yeah, see, look, <laughs> it looks kind of the same, and they're like, oh, they're together because their rings kind of match. Well, back in the old days, <coughs> on what finger do you wear your ring? This is important stuff to know. As there is a language of flowers, a language of postage stamps, what language of, I gotta read up on the language of postage stamps now. Uh, so is there a language of rings on the wearing thereof. In the case of a gentleman wishing to marry, he wears a plain or chaste gold ring upon the first finger of the left or heart hand. So the first finger, it's showing uh, the pinky, the first finger. So this, if he's got a ring on, I guess on your index finger, that means I'm a looking, I'm not married. I got a ring here, that means that I'm looking for love. Uh, right, okay. Um, when success attends his suit and he is actually engaged, the ring passes to the third, third finger. Okay, so then you're like, you wear it here, and you're like, hello ladies. Uh, and then they're like, okay, we'll have some of that. And then they're like, okay, we're engaged now, and it goes on your ring finger. That's, that's what they would do. However, if the man desires to tell the fair ones, fair ones being ladies, I suppose, the fair ones, that he is not only not in the market, but that he doesn't desire to marry at all. Um, he wears a signet upon his little finger so that ladies understand he's not a marrying man. So if you had a pinky finger, it's like, get lost. I went out to the store. That's, could you imagine going to the jewelry store and they're like, oh, I see you're looking for one of our many different types of rings for your fingers. <laughs> are you looking for love? Are you getting engaged? Or are you not interested at all? And uh, the guy's like, listen, I need a pinky ring finger. I'm done with this. And so they'd sell him the pinky ring finger. You made the pinky finger look so bad. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh my but so they would get, okay, and that's, that's a diagram. That's the, if you're wearing that and you're a guy, you don't, leave me alone. That's what that ring says right there. Did anybody else know that? I didn't know that. Thank you very much, Kim. That's because I was looking for love. Ah, I got my lady right here. Uh, so pinky ring meant, I am not interested whatsoever. Um, leave me alone. But that, could you imagine that you come home and your mom sees that you got a ring on your pinky finger? She'd be like, oh no, we are having the talk tonight. She'd be like, you are getting that pinky ring. And they'd be, they'd be like, that would have been pretty awkward. Because eventually you'd have to go over for dinner at your parents' place. And all parents have some kind of designs about where your life is headed. <laughs> so you have to think at some point somebody came home wearing that pinky ring and they're like, oh no, we are going to have a talk. You know, Marsha down the street. Well, she's got the ring on the other finger, which means she's available. You change that ring over and they're like jamming it on the guy's index finger. Anyway, so uh, here's what the ladies did. So, okay, I'm going to recap for men. Ring on this finger. Hello, ladies, I'm not attached, but you know, I'm looking. Uh, ring on this finger, too late, I'm taken. Ring on this finger, back off. I'm not interested in nothing, leave me alone. I'm a, I'm a bachelor, I'm not the marrying kind. Uh, so when a lady, the fair sex, it says here, the laws are somewhat different. A plain or chaste gold ring on the little finger of the right hand implies not engaged. Or in plainer words, waiting for, it says it right here, Waiting for offers. <laughs> Waiting for <laughs> offers? What are you, like a cow at the cattle auction? Like, how many guys are oh, sold? Anyway, so if you got a ring on this finger and you're a lady on your right hand, that means come on down. I wonder if there was like a magic moment where the index finger guy is like clocking the hand of the girl and it's like this and they're like, oh, they meet. That's what it took. See that uh, people I imagine in the 1800s were staring at other people's hands a lot more than we stare at people's hands now, I'm thinking. Um, so if the girl has a ring on her pinky finger, on her right hand, not on her left hand, on her right hand, um, that means that you're open to offers. If the fair one proposes to defy all siege to her heart, she places a ring on her first and fourth finger, like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. What, what's that? <laughs> like that, um, which means to keep away the men. Oh my gosh. And it says, we might remark, 
en passant that this combination is rarely seen. Look, it even says right here, women, no admirers wanted, rarely seen. It's in brackets. So they're like, you're not going to see this, but that's, we had to draw you a picture because you're never going to see that. Um, but yeah, that's, if you saw a woman like this, <laughs> I knew eventually everybody would comment on the middle finger one. What? The middle finger means nothing? And so I, didn't, I said, <laughs> they said I didn't oh, even the middle finger means something. <laughs> I didn't even talk about the middle finger. Middle finger for rent. Look out! Okay. But yeah, that's how confusing is that? Because if you're, if you're a guy and you're like, I don't want nothing, and you put your ring on the wrong finger, they'd be like, that's a very masculine looking woman who's open to offers. You might end up being an engaged man by the end of the day when you wanted none of it. <laughs> and then she grunts Metallica style, marry me! <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, okay, let's try and find some helpful household tips. Um, how to clean real pearls. Let's see this one. Uh, how to clean real pearls. Put them in a clean soft cloth and sprinkle them um, over with common kitchen salt. Again, they're just using this salt. Like they have three ingredients in their house. Salt? Why, friends, I don't even need to try to sell salt at my store. You can use it for virtually anything. Get the common cold. Take stains off. Like salt was the thing. Look at this. Okay. So anyway, I digress. Um, the peace sign in England means the middle finger in America. Is that true? Oh. Or am I going to end up repeating that? And they'll be like, why did you hear that? <laughs> mm. It says basically to, to put salt on a cloth, um, put your pearl inside, tie, tie the cloth up and rinse it in tepid water until the salt is, is dissolved, and then take out the pearls and carefully dry them. Um, somebody was saying about how to check for real pearls, if it's uh, something about on your teeth. It's, it's true. It's, if you take a pearl and you rub it, like if this was the pearl and these are your chompers, or this is a horrible demonstration. You go like this, and you rub your teeth on it like that. Oh, if it feels sandy, it's a real pearl. If it's smooth, it's it's a man-made pearl or plastic. Pearl I am, I, first off, I'm going to apologize to you right now. Oh, why? I'm going to apologize for the last many years of us being together. I don't know For why. the next thing which I'm about to read. Oh, no. For the entire time that I have known Melissa, she has called paper towels, Toweling paper. <laughs> I have never heard anybody use that I'll in my life. I'll even just say toweling. Yeah, so she says toweling. I'm like, it doesn't say that on the package. It's not toweling paper, it's paper towels. Well, apparently my wife is from the year 1869, yes! where it says toweling. <laughs> toweling is best bought by the yard. Six yards make five towels and should be hemmed oh, by hand. Oh, yeah, but it means actual towels. It's saying like Terry cloth. Yeah, but toweling was a thing. Your family just uses like hundred year old expressions still and taught that But too. we mean like telling paper, not terry cloth. I know, but it probably came from that, right? They're like, it's okay. why it's paper toweling. I don't know. Anyway, I was always like, I was already nuts. dancing before I realized what you were saying. That's how it goes. Yeah. <laughs> Premature dance. Uh, many <laughs> families, like dance. Um, many families eat very rapidly. Feeling that it is a waste of time to sit long at the table, the mother or nurse, nurse, okay, the, the mother or nurse often insisting on the children hurrying over their meals in order that they may not be late for school. Yet, because they, they only got one meal a day and that was before school apparently, or they went to school three times a day. Uh, yet, they are surely sacrificing health and comfort by undue haste. If the food is well masticated, the saliva and gastric juices act more freely and render digestion easy, even to a weak stomach. So sit back and let your kids just chew loudly at the table till their little heart's content. Yeah. Um, in case of fire, if a person catches on fire, well, let's hope that didn't, how often did that happen? It's in a, they wrote it down in a newspaper. You know, like when you catch on fire because you were ironing something, it's like that million ways to die in a West. There's always some kind of thing after you. Um, <laughs> So in case, in case you catch on fire, this is it right there. Uh, if a person catches on fire, running to fetch assistance will probably result in terrible burns, uh, if not loss of life. That would also be terrifying to the other person too. You're on fire and you're like, um, excuse me, good sir, I appear to be on fire. It's like, whoa, you're on fire, dude. Because that's how they talk like they were West Coasters back then in England. Um, so they're saying, if you're on fire, don't run around looking for someone. That's bad advice. Um, instead, he should shout for help and throw himself on the floor 
enveloped, if impossible, in a woolen tablecloth and curtain and should be rolling. Oh, see, that's the original stop, drop, and roll. I don't, I don't, they often don't tell you to cover yourself in wool and tablecloths now. I shouldn't be laughing. I mean, fire is a terrible thing. But uh, if I was on, if I was like, oh, I've somehow caught myself on fire, I don't know that I'd be, I know cloth will extinguish the flames. That's the idea. But if you don't do it at the right pace, you could just catch everything on fire. Um, if oh any God. person be present, he should wrap the blanket or whatever it may be around the burning person and hold it tightly down to exclude the air. Well, that's good advice. But um, yeah, I bet it did happen um, more than you think, especially then. Long dresses and yeah. Yeah. Matthew said he was on fire several times. Well, he was a firefighter. Still, I mean, I can't say, oh, I've lit my hair on fire. I mean, mind you, Matthew didn't tell us that he was on fire several times while he was a firefighter. He might have yeah. been on fire several times just for fun or who knows. Thank you very much, Stephanie. She said, this is why, that is why school lunch programs started. Children often were not sent with lunches. Oh, here's some good advice. If your beer is a little bit muddy, uh, just stick a lump of alum the size of a walnut and two ounces of sugar into a barrel of muddy beer. It'll clear it right up. Alum? Mm -hmm. Not like aluminum. No. What's alum? Hold on, what did you Somebody say? Somebody tell me what A-L-U-M. It's a powder. Yeah, but should you be throwing that, is that safe? It's not like, uh, you know. Alum the size of a walnut? Yeah. Hold on, to clear muddy beer. Put in a lump of alum. You know, when uh, when you have a barrel alum of... alum is. Isn't it like a... I don't know. Somebody look it up and tell it. Oh, alum is aluminum. Yeah, okay. Oh, I guess, yeah. They use it in, a, in beer cans. Maybe that's how they... Pickling. Powdered I... alum. Yeah. Well, I don't think you should ingest it. It's probably... If you put a lump of it in... This whole time, I didn't know it was aluminum. Yeah. Well, that's what I thought. I, I wouldn't think of oh. putting powdered aluminum in. That would be pretty gross. Um, okay. Uh, let's... It's a white powder like baking sodium. I thought it was a white powder. Some of it's pretty straightforward stuff, like if your glasses get dirty, you wash them with soap. There was one in here that kind of caught my eye earlier. Mm. Oh, here's one. Um, to remove tea stains oh, from God. white or cream cashmere. Specifically, you know, when, you're, when your white or cream cashmere gets tea stains on it, this is a very specific party that's happened. <laughs> <laughs> that's a very specific incident. You know, you're dressed up in cashmere, and you've gotten tea on it. I imagine they were eating cucumber sandwiches and having high tea, like, oh, yeah, I want tea, you know, tea stains on my cashmere. Um, place the stained part in a saucer. Again, tea party, clearly, because they've got a saucer standing by. Um, uh, place the stained part in a saucer with sufficient gin to cover the stain. Then rub well covered with gin with a piece of material the same color as the dress. In a few minutes, the stain will disappear and leave no trace. This is particularly safe and was first used on a new dress which some tea had been upset. Now, that's also a great way to explain your drinking problem <laughs> when you get home and they're like, you smell a lot like gin, Martha. And she is like, I spilt tea on myself. It says to rub myself. Why is this thing? Why are you throwing the iPad around? It keeps popping off of the thing. Did you have a tea stain on your cashmere? Anyway. What a great excuse to smell oh like gosh. you're covered in alcohol because you've been rubbing gin to get rid of the tea stains. Seems like a likely story to me, <laughs> 1860s lady at your tea party. We all know what you've actually been up to. Um, this is one that I kind of knew. The best way to test eggs is to get a basin of cold water and put them in. If they sink, they are good. If they float, they are bad. Uh, flour vases can be easily purified and cleaned by rinsing them out with warm water and powdered charcoal. Yeah, people, mm -hmm. people brush your teeth with charcoal. Yeah, isn't charcoal like, uh, what do they use in soap? Um, lye? Lard. 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 No, not lye. lard. Lard oh, comes lye. from a, cat, a pig. Yeah, okay. Uh, a little vinegar put into a frying pan and, uh, over the fire will quickly remove the odor of fish and onions from the pan. Uh, to use up cold potatoes, mash the potatoes and put a layer on them at the bottom of a pie dish, sprinkle over a seasoning of salt, stew over little bits of butter and a sprinkle of flour, then put the, put more potatoes so that until the dish is, um, uh, I can't read that part. Pour a little milk over and bake until golden brown. That's from Janet. 1869 Janet tells us that. I wonder what 1869 Karen, 1869 Karen would be complaining about 1869 Janet, probably. Um, let's see, hints, oh, this ought, this ought to be just saucy. 
Hints for the Young Housewife. Dare I read this, folks? You should tell everybody again what you're reading from, because some people that came on are like, what is he doing? I am, oh, if you're not sure of what I'm reading, Melissa and I came across this 1869 recipe book uh, that ha primarily has a whole bunch of handwritten recipes in it from the 1800s, which at some point Melissa might try making. Some yeah. of the some of the dishes are kind of gross. Some of them sound all right. I'm not going for the gross ones. I'm not that brave. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Well, I mean, it's I I should say it sounds gross to me because all of you that love seafood, you know my taste. <laughs> well, here's one on uh, horse hawks: how to make horse knuckle soup. I won't be doing that. <laughs> I'm not making horse knuckle. I sat on my foot and now I can't have to get out of my chair. I would have thought horses were a little bit more <laughs> oh valuable gosh. than to be using for soups and things back well, then. Well, what if it was like an old lame horse that was just going to the bush anyway? Well, that would be bad because your horse would be pulling a plow and then you'd be like, ah, I think you're dinner tonight. That's kind of sad. I mean, we okay. weren't allowed to let the pet, the animals on our farm were not allowed to be our pets, but at some point they all were. <laughs> So we are reading from this 1800s recipe book, and in the back we found that she had cut. Uh, this is Great Grandma Agnes's recipe book that uh, I somehow acquired amongst an estate of other things. Um, she had some tips and tricks on marriage and things. Uh, so let's see. <laughs> That's a good idea, Mark. <laughs> oh, hints for the young housewife. Uh, let's see. Oh, it's kind of boring. It's just like how to clean... How to, it's all like basically just telling women how to take care of the house. Mm. Why can't I oh, puffiness or swelling under the eyes is frequently a sign of indigestion. To remove, I need this, look at this. I get puffiness under my eyes. You need sleep. Uh, to remove the puffiness, bathe the eyes in cold water for five minutes first thing in the morning and attend to the eyes. Excessive well, yawning. like your whole head in the water. Excessive yawning shows that the liver is not acting properly. A pill composed of one fourth grain of podophyllin in three grains of compound extract of eolosynth taken at bedtime will keep the organ working perfectly. I don't believe you. <laughs> I don't think anybody should be taking that stuff by themselves. Oh it should say talk to your doctor or maybe sleep or I don't know, I drink don't some water. You. No. Oh. How did they oh. know that they would keep the organs working perfectly? Why are these chemicals, which we've just discovered, scraped off the root of a tree? Clearly, they're good for you. Peg tooth, my foot is asleep. It's not all the way asleep. It's just at that tingly stage where you can't possibly touch it because it it hurts. Your foot's asleep tingles. right now? Yeah, I was sitting on it because I was so little. I like this. <laughs> she kept, um, oh, I'm going to read this one on platonic friendships. Woo! -hoo. But look, they kept a, a, should I send this in for the free sample? For Chiver's Jellies? Look, if I mail this, if I mail this coupon, this coupon in, I will get myself a free 1800s jelly. I feel like you shouldn't hold your breath. <laughs> and look, Dr. Griffiths has to say about Chiver's delicious, wholesome, refreshing, flavored with ripe fruit juices. I have no hesitation in stating that Chiver's jellies are the best I've ever examined. It doesn't say that he ate one. <laughs> I've, ex I've examined these jellies and they're the best I've ever examined. What does that mean? They look cool? Oh, Jody said, if you drink Diet Coke more often than water, you'll get arsenic <laughs> in your liver. Oh, saying. so that's probably not good. I'm just saying. Mm. Oh, uh, a greasy coat collar. If you have a grease, how, how hard are you working that your coat collar gets greasy? It's because their hair is rubbing on their coat collar. Grease may be removed from coat collars and the shiny gloss from elbows, etc., by rubbing with a cloth dipped in ammonia. And then the, the wife can hold it over the husband's face until he passes out. And then she's like, now I don't have to worry about cooking and only taking two minutes to myself in a day. I'm taking a whole five hours because you'd be knocked out. Um, okay. <laughs> Platonic friendships. This might be a little risque. If you're watching from home, this is 1860s love advice. Is there danger in platonic friendship? Undoubtedly. When a man and woman, young and unfettered, they've got their rings on this finger and that finger. They're like, we're free and single, but we're just friends. We'll beware. Um, when they're young and unfettered, there's always the risk that friendship should slip over its principus edge and become love when it falls over both sides. Well, that's kind of a nice way of saying you might get to like someone. Um, nothing could be more ideal for the perfection of love between man and woman has been described as friendship, in quotes, 
computed by a dash of passion. We're just friends. Bum, bum, bum. Don't be thinking about moving that finger, that ring finger over yet, because you're just friends. It is when only one friend has lost footing that the danger comes in. So I like you, but you don't like me. And now I am awfully unhappy. Thank you, Kathleen. She That's said, what they're saying. You remind her of Howdy Doody. I am <laughs> like a Howdy Doody. <laughs> I bet she would. <laughs> Mm. Uh, <laughs> let's see. So they're saying when one friend stops liking the other one, well, that's when there's going to be trouble. It is when only one friend has lost footing that the danger comes in. Few friends get to know each other so well and to appreciate each other's best qualities that sometimes one may suddenly awaken to find that the old friendship is not enough to satisfy. It craves something more. What does it crave? When the craving only comes to one, not to the other, the friendship that was so pleasant may turn to sharp pain. What is its risk? What of it? What of it, you ask? There are risks in marriage, in love, in every relation in life. Shall people avoid making friendships which are the most helpful and enjoyable possible to make just because they may be, exist a risk of pain in them? Certainly not. But better far is it to spend happy hours in companion of one of your own sex than to rest the tragedy of unrequited love. So it's saying if you're a guy, you should just have guy friends and if you're a girl you should have friends that are girls i guess is that true you should, what? i don't have a lot of friends that are girls because well i'm a married man for starters that'd be weird if i was like i enjoy your company but i'm gonna go spend more of it with sally i don't think you'd be very happy and i don't think i don't know i guess they're 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 just saying that if you if you hang around somebody of the opposite sex you're either gonna like each other and then one of them stops liking you and then it's gonna be just you know i don't know yeah <laughs> Not good there's, times. There's a whole bunch of, co uh, uh, you know, things that you probably shouldn't bring up with a bunch of people. This might be one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see. The brace last mentioned. To keep water pure. A good family dinner. Housekeeping hints. The grease on wallpapers might be removed by uh, applying a paste of Fuller's Earth and water. What is Fuller's Earth? What? Fuller's Earth? Uh, I'm reading comments at the same time. Oh, sorry. What did you say? Oh, it just says to use Fuller's earth and water um, and scrub it on your wallpaper to get grease off. Uh, you know what I'm guessing it is? Mm, Chalk. Uh, oh, maybe. I don't know. It could be something. When frying cold potatoes, first slice them and dredge them thickly with flour. This causes them to brown quickly and also improves the flavor. Again, powdered another potato clay. recipe. It's powdered clay. Powdered clay. Thank okay. You. <laughs> if you let it dry, though, I bet that powdered clay would be... Uh... But that's how you get grease out of clothes now. You just put... I mean, clay would work. But you just rub chalk on it it takes it out. Oh, there's... Okay, here's advice for your dog. We haven't had one of these yet. A dog doctor's advice. Not a veterinarian, a dog doctor. Will you look at my cat, good sir? No! Why, well, I'm a dog doctor. <laughs> he only... Spec he specifically looked... He's a dog doctor, folks. <laughs> you married this. <laughs> she moved her ring finger... She moved her ring over to that finger for this, right there. And now it looks like she's having doubts. <laughs> uh, <laughs> see, that's a sympathy cuddle right there. That's the... I might have made a mistake, but I'm stuck with you, so let's just get through this. <laughs> um, a dog doctor's advice. Don't overfeed your dog. Overfeeding causes nine-tenths of the diseases of dogs. That doesn't sound like good math. Overfeeding? Overfeeding causes nine-tenths of the diseases. Unless they pack a lot of other oh. stuff in that last tenth. Uh, the dog will be a law unto himself in the matter if you allow him. I guess that means your dog's going to just pig out all day long if you leave his food out. And have not already spoiled him, place a dish of food before him. And if the food exceeds his capacity, he will try to hide some of it for a time when he will need it. Dogs are naturally more economical than man. Let the amount you give him less what he carried away and hid be your measure. Never, so I guess, put some food in a bowl, see what your dog eats, see what he hides, and then that's all you give him from that point on. Uh, he has taught you what his capacity is. Bear in mind that a female eats more than a male. I won't talk, I won't say. Uh, a puppy should be fed three times a day. A dog over one year should not be fed more than once and in the middle of the day is the best time. Well, that's interesting. I haven't seen Chewy hide his food of you. We have a dog. Chewy, uh, he's this, I mean, you guys, you need to see what happened to Chewy. Okay, yeah, now that we're on the topic of dogs. I, who cares about the eating thing? Just you wait. Our, our dog had something 
he's fine. Anyway, Melissa's gonna, she's tracking down our dog, which is probably, see, I talk about dogs and then she instantly, oh, there he is. I've not seen our dog hide food. I've seen yeah. him take he every single toy home. he owns out. He doesn't like to eat alone, so he brings it out to us. Yeah. This, at Chewy. This was once a cotton ball with eyeballs. Oh my gosh. He had his summer haircut. He had some mats and we weren't able to get them out. So I, he had to go pretty short. But look at him, he's just so little. Yeah, you gotta pick him just up for it. Little baby. Yeah, look, he's just a tiny little pupper. He's so little. Yeah, he looks like a combination of a rabbit and a deer. I don't think he looks much like a dog when he's running. He keeps his little hind legs together and he just pop, pop, pop. Or Chewy. Like a cartoon happy dog. Sleeping? That's how our dog runs around. Wake you up. Mm. So Chewy takes his food from his room and he'll bring it like piece by piece, drop it in front of us, make sure we're like with him, and then eat it. <laughs> he toodles back to the couch to go back, cuddle mm. in his pillow nest. Oh, this one looks a little juicy. It's, um,. Proverbs for plain girls. <laughs> Proverbs for, you know, hmm, we should probably write about this in the paper. Uh, Proverbs for plain girls. Beauty is but skin deep. What God hath made and meant to charm, let not man despise. A virtuous woman, though ugly, is the ornament of the house. Though or ugly. Right, look, it does right there. And there's even commas, so I have to pause. A virtuous woman, comma, though ugly, comma, is the ornament of the house. Wow. I'm not saying that for effect. That's how wow. they wrote it. Yeah. Nothing makes a woman more esteemed. <laughs> could you have this called somebody ugly? They're like, could you imagine if you were handed this? Like your mom yeah. is like, you need to read this. And you're like, mom. Anyway, a virtuous woman, though ugly, is the ornament of the house. Nothing makes a woman more esteemed by the opposite sex than chastity. Really? A fine lady is but a painted sepulcher for man... Uh, to bury his happiness in. Is that what it's there? I it could, I'm not making this up. To be man's tender mate was woman born and in obeying nature, she best serves the purpose of heaven. Nothing lovelier can be found in woman than to study household good. <laughs> really, nothing lovelier can be found in woman than to study household good and <laughs> good work. That book. <laughs> and good works in her husband to promote. I think a guy wrote this. Hey, Bob. Though men may fall in love with girls at play, there is nothing to make them stand to their love like seeing them at work. She who does not make her family comfortable with will herself never be happy at home, and she who is not happy at home will never be happy anywhere. Whoa! <laughs> Whoa! Put that in the paper today and try and live. You know, girls who are ugly should probably just learn how to work real hard so your man will appreciate you. Isn't that awful? 1869 girls. Oh, that's horrible. Wow. I hope that was the girl who, you know what happened? That girl read that and she moved her ring over. She's like, not interested. I'm not, nah, -uh. I'm not working my butt off to get my two minutes of rest a day for this slack dog yokel who's going to pick me up and just make me work like a horse in the house. No, I get it. Now I know that's why I invented the two finger. She did this. It was two fingers. Remember she, that girl read this and she's like, mm. <laughs> wow. She's like, no, I'm not having any of that. Wow. Yeah. Does your sneeze feel chilly? What does that even mean? Does your sneeze feel chilly? Depend upon it if you are beginning a cold and under no circumstance can a cold be called a beautifier. Get some water into half a tumbler, tum, tum, oh, half a tumbler full, sorry, it's a little old timey. A tumbler full of it, add 60 drops of sal volatile that still doesn't sound good drink this straight off and two hours later repeat this dose well i don't know if that's a cure for a, a cold because you don't see people you think that they thought that was a cure for the cold and then probably a bunch of people you know dropped it's funny because a lot of people are saying it was probably written by a male and i know you said that too but no it might have been it, written by a lady it might because it, it's different times so actually it's... most of these are titled the author is janet it wouldn't surprise me at all if it was a woman that wrote that. Uh, and I think that, I don't know, there's there's certain things in our day to day, like when you, we, you live in a house and you're constantly surrounded by things that need to be done, it does mess with your mental health. So, but I don't think that she needs to, you know, work her tail off because she's ugly. <laughs> That's pretty bad, really. That's probably the worst one that I read so far. That's Some of it was bad. like playful. And that one was just like, and you know. And who is it supposed to be judging if she's ugly or not? Whoever, I don't know. Whoever whoever threw this newspaper in front of her is like, you ain't getting married anytime soon. Here's some advice. 
That's pretty bad. Yeah. Um, on, a, on another note, it says uh, to extinguish a chimney fire. We heard that you're supposed to close your windows and doors and throw salt on it. But later they now say, take a large handful of sulfur and throw it into the fire. When the sulfurous fumes ascend, they'll put the fire out and probably take your entire family out with it. How, what were they keeping in their house at that time? Why would you Why would you have an abundance of sulfur just sitting around? Sulfur? Yeah. Oh, does it say sulfur or salt? Sulfur. And they put it in the fire? Yeah, right what there. What does that smell like farts? Probably, yeah, probably. I mean, there's a, their house, if they're constantly cooking eggs and putting fire out with sulfur. When your home feels like warm toot, you know someone has recently put out a sulfur <laughs> oh fire. Oh my gosh. My goodness. Um, wasp stings. This might come in handy. When no other remedies are at hand, the poison should be sucked from the sting and very hot uh, <laughs> fomentations applied. Oil of lavender or eucalyptus oil will relieve the pain. So and then burn yourself and then put eucalyptus oil on it, apparently. So you know what actually works for wasp stings? If you guys end up getting bitten by a wasp though, many times, I'd suggest going to do a doctor. But something that worked for us is if you take a, uh, make a paste with just baking soda and water and you put it on, let it dry. For some reason it takes out the swelling. I have no clue why. I'm not a doctor, obviously. I shouldn't have to tell you, you know. <laughs> <coughs> Thank you very much, Pawa. Here's, a, here's one, like a beauty tip. Stars of the face. This is what I'm reading right here. Stars of the face. Bright eyes are never present when the eyes themselves are tired and worn. Try lying down for 20 minutes. We've already established that a woman of the day only had two to three minutes to herself. So I guess this is at night when you get your 20 minutes of sleep. Bright eyes are never present when the eyes themselves are tired and worn. Try lying down for 20 minutes, keeping on the closed lids a couple of pads of old handkerchief saturated in boiling water. Um, to which has been added a, a sufficiency of salt. An ordinary towel. Yeah, your eyes are going to be bright after that. You're going to be like this. Ah! And boiling salt water in my eyes. An ordinary <laughs> towel may be used, but is a little too heavy. Witch hazel added to the water instead of the salt has also a very beneficial effect if it is dabbed beneath the eyes to take off that dark, weary look. So if you're feeling a little bit tired, you know, and your eyes look a little, you know, you're having kind of an off day, lie down and pour boiling salt water on your eyes. That'll wake you right up. And when your husband gets home, he'll be like, why? Your eyes are awfully bright today. <laughs> because you scalded yourself. It actually says to pour boiling salt water on your eyelids. Oh, I wonder why. I don't think it, it doesn't say. So I think that that why they're saying that is that when you're boiling it, you are able to dissolve more salt. So you need a more... Um, it says, saturated solution. So you'd have to let it cool, obviously, but it would still be a more saturated saline solution. To put they're not the real clear. If I'm an average person of 1869, I might just be dumping boiling water on like it. Maybe we just need more instructions now. Mm. <laughs> yeah, there's an awful lot of things you can do with eggs. Um, do we say garbage disposal or garburator here? We don't have one regardless. <laughs> garburator, I think, is what garbage. would be more common. Uh, yeah. Well, garbage. either or, really. I haven't even seen one in so long. Like, are they actually common here, do you think? Like, <coughs> no, we don't have a whole, I don't know. Maybe in new houses. I don't know, I haven't seen one in a long time. Okay, now here's some, here's some household hints. These are some 1800s life hacks. We're gonna go back to a couple of those. How to cleanse a new copper or boiler from all rust. Scour well with paraffin and sand or soil. We need to just make it dirtier that way, but. Then with monkey soap, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, This it, it, it's just funny to me. Um, afterwards, oh fill with gosh. water to which a little soft soap or soda and boil for about half an hour, empty and thoroughly dry. Monkey soap? I am making this up. Anyway, so first, put if you want to clean your copper pot, um, first fill it with dirt and then some monkey soap and you're all good to go. <laughs> then you're just, you're good, apparently. Oh, here's an infallible remedy for choking. Uh, if someone is choking, break an egg in a cup, again, an egg. I'm just gonna point out every time that they're using an egg for something. Someone's choking, get an egg. You break it into a cup and swallow whole. It will be found to remove the most difficult obstruction. So somebody's choking, blah, 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 blah. And someone, my wife, comes along and she's like, I know what to do, ah. She cr I'm like, Whoa. And she cracks an egg and dumps it. Ah. And you got to think at the time, I would be fighting you off. I'd be like, oh, and she's like, no, but, uh, 
Maybe it would cause you to have a gag reflex or something. They're thinking that it's lubricating the object and it would either go in or be able to come out. Probably, most likely, if you're really choking, you're just going to have a bunch of egg running down your face and all of, oh! Well, if you're like completely, it's bad. Don't worry. I, I know first aid and CPR. I would know what to do if he was choking. <laughs> this is another problem when one of the only three things that you um, own in your house is Monkey an egg. soap was a brand. Thank you, Amy. <laughs> well, apparently the people from Monkey Soap Incorporated it's put that one in. The soap that Alexander uses. Because <laughs> <laughs> it makes me smell like a monkey? No, because you are a monkey. Oh, because I am a monkey. <laughs> <laughs> it makes you smell like a monkey. See, now I'm the one who's like, uh, uh and then I'll be like, aww. <laughs> uh. Wow. Wowie, wow, wow. That's all I have to say. Wowie, wow, wow. They had a lot of hints. They had a lot of hints. It's uh, a slimy egg that makes the obstruction go down the throat. Oh, jeez. Eggs were, mm. eggs were like the duct tape of that time. Hmm. Don't put a cottage uh, piano with its back mm -hmm. flat against the wall if you can possibly help it, or if it's unavoidable. Um, that's just a bad idea. That's what it says. Uh, it will inevitably become damp and ruin the instrument. It will make an effective corner uh, if placed slantwise in an angle in the room. It, it looks better and um, will prevent it from getting damp. I guess you had really bad insulation back then if you had a piano against your wall and water was getting all over it. Yeah. So a lot of people, a few people were asking how I like the coffee. Oh good, you can talk about that while I find something more to talk I about. I picked the black canoe, wait, wait, I was showing it to my iPad, oh my goodness you guys, I, I'm not even that tired. And it says it tastes like vanilla, milk, chocolate, and caramel. Uh, it's actually pretty good. You know, I, I hate it when I get a coffee and I'm like, and it's disappointing, but this one was good. I actually really like it a lot. And it's beans, so you have to grind it yourself. Could you, do you have the option to have it pre-ground or did you, did you just order the beans? No, it's just how it comes. Yeah. Oh my gosh, you guys. It really smells good. I'm not a coffee yeah. drinker, but that smells good. Yeah, it smells good. And you know, the little smell hole, you know, the little like, you know, that, I'm sure that's not what it's actually for, but it's not overpowering. Like when we, I walk into the store, I don't just smell coffee. Uh, Cause some, but some people were saying that it might influence the smell of other products around it, which is true. <laughs> but I don't think it's going to be a big, a big, I've already opened this. I don't know why I'm smelling the package, but yeah, it's good. I've had it. I was, I seriously got up looking forward to having another cup of that this morning. So, and the, the person that makes it, Joe, super, super nice guy. So I don't know. I'm, I'm happy that we're able to support their company and share it with you guys. And they sell it online anyways, as well, for people that want to order it. Right. Yep. See, it's hard to answer questions while you're reading and concentrating on other things. It is. It? <laughs> it is. It's, it's fascinating. I'm learning what all the things I can do is with potatoes. Is that coffee from that era? Uh, no. It's coffee from our era. <laughs> yeah. It looks old timey. You know, though. I'm not going to lie. If I opened up something and there was a sealed thing of coffee, you better believe I would be grinding it up and testing it. I hope I'd live through that. Get out the eggs just in case. <laughs> mm -hmm. Ooh, tipsy cake. Tipsy cake. Yep. Ginger snaps. I haven't oh. been to England yet. I grind mine as needed. Me too. Uh, except for uh, the only thing was, maybe you guys know, for the people that drink coffee, I could just Google this, but I have you guys. <laughs> what do you think? Is it okay to freeze coffee beans? Because I know with this one, uh, I can't remember how long it said. Use within one month or two weeks after opening, just to make sure it's fresh. It'll be fine after two weeks for sure. But can I freeze that? Because I'm the only one in our house that drinks coffee. So, I mean, there's a good chance I'm going to have coffee still left over. So I thought I would throw it in the freezer, but I didn't want to ruin it. But it says that the best thing to waterproof uh, yes, and clean leather it. with is castor oil. I'm almost thinking I should try that. They're like, nothing has been proven at this point to be as good a cleanser and waterproof um, device, uh, uh, waterproofer than castor oil. That would have been a recent invention around that time too. That was invented by Edgar Case, who was also kind of a mystic. Horse hoops. I don't understand where that came from. <laughs> I freeze coffee beans all the time. No problem. They say not to freeze. And that's always, you know, it's just like that though. Hey, you go into Google and you're like, you need a definite answer. And there's always like one huge half that says yes. And one huge half that says no. And then you just got to wing it and hope. <laughs> mm. Yes, I'm freezing. Maybe I'll just, it lasts a long time. 
maybe, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna put it in a freezer bag uh, and then put it in the freezer so that I don't end up having like, you know, the freezer taste. Cause after like a month in my freezer, I don't want it to taste like freezer. I want it to taste like delicious coffee still. Yep. Try it, see what's best for you. See, that is sound advice, Alex. Um, when you're lacing your corset, when you have a corset, ladies, and you're lacing it, it says, lace your corsets with plastic instead of stay lace. You'll notice the difference. Mm. Instead of what? Stay lace. Oh. You know. Lace the stays? Yeah. Refrigerate um, in a container. Yeah. Excuse me. All these sort of things. Anyway, it's a fun book to go through. Um, there's literally just pages and pages and pages full of tips and tricks. Um, there's a lot of recipes in here too. A lot of recipes. Uh, did you mean Edgar Case? Yeah, Edgar Case. Yeah. Have you tried Puerto? How do you say it? Puerto Rican? Why can't I talk? Puerto today? Rican? Yeah, yeah. Coffee? Have I? I don't, I don't know. know. I might have. I I haven't. Oh, I, there's a few things that fruits and actually. I I really like coffee and tea and food. <laughs> So I would try it for sure. Yeah, I don't know who had this. Castor oil would smell fishy. Yeah, there's lots of stuff. There's horse care, there's recipes, uh, plasters for sprains, like how to make your own cast. You really had to be self-sufficient back in the old days to, to be able to do this. It says uh, Captain A. Talbot. Our um, Katarina's on from Hamburg. The Prince of Wales and the Stable Lads. Mm. Oh, Heather said, send me pics of the recipes, pretty please. Yeah, I know. There was a lot of people interested in... in... No, no, Heather, your sister Heather. Why well, no, he yeah. Because yeah, somebody collects old recipes. Somebody, I'm just saying. It could be Heather. Yeah, there's a lot of recipes in here. And it looks there's like... There's one for uh, horse hawks, Heather. I feel like maybe not these recipes. Well, there's there's roast. Yeah. There's it, normal ones in here, too. Horse? I had uh, deviled biscuits. Almost any kind of thin biscuits will do. Soak them well in the best Luca oil. Sprinkle them each side with black pepper, uh, cayenne, and a dusting of salt. Toast over the fire on a gridiron and serve very hot on a folded napkin. Well, that would be pretty spicy. Cayenne and black pepper. I guess that's why they call it deviled. That's what, I'm surprised they didn't recommend giving that to the guy who's choking with egg in his mouth. Mmm. <laughs> He's choking on that deviled biscuit. Let's stuff eggs in his face and give him more deviled biscuit. Oh my gosh. And then you wonder why the life expectancy was like 35 years old back then. Probably because whoever wrote this article got hunted down afterwards about the plain girls. <laughs> That's what happened. Somebody was like, mm, no, we're going to find him. Oh, thank you, Matthew. He put the link for the high horse coffee in there. Yeah. Anyway. It's, it's, I am, I'm, I'm pretty picky when it comes to coffee as well. I guess I'm kind of picky, but I really do like it. I'm not even, I'm not just saying that it's actually good. I mean, to be fair, I did only try the black new so far, but I really do enjoy it. Yeah, we'll bring more home down the road. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed some of today's well, we uh, tips some, and tricks. There's some questions. Okay, we'll answer some questions. We'll do some usual live feed stuff I now. Could, I could feel him going to sign off. April, th thank you, April, for the $2 for me to answer your question. Uh, how much coffee have I had? I don't drink coffee. This is me with no caffeine of any kind. True. So you can only imagine what I'd be like if I actually drank copious amounts of coffee or caffeine. And I've had four cups, so. I've had nothing, I've had. I mean, in the day, I obviously didn't have it now because it's getting late. I made myself a fresh squeezed orange juice today. Yep. Um, That's like Alexander's new thing. Oh, I love it. My my favorite drink to make myself is a freshly, like, and I well, do it old the, fashioned. It's like the old school glass uh, yeah. juice squeezer and then he shoves it through the little strainer. That's right. Oh, I've discovered, Mo says never too late to discover coffee. Well, it's probably too late in the day right now for me to discover it. Look at what I'm acting like already. But um, I've tried coffee. I just don't like it. I don't I'm like okay. the flavor. I'm okay not sharing. I gotta be honest. She can have coffee. all the coffee she wants. <laughs> I've said it before, if, I, if we get a box of mixed chocolates, you know, like at Christmas time and somebody gives you chocolates and then you get one and you're like, I'm going to try this one without reading the little instructions on what each chocolate is. If it's coffee flavor, I reject it like into a napkin. And I'm like, you want some, you want this? I, it's, oh, I only ate part of it. I already had, you already had it spluffed out of your You mouth. kissed me before. You can, it doesn't matter if my slobber is on I'm this half of the like, chocolate. Take the stuff out of your teeth. Yeah. Anyway. And then she comes at me with a deviled biscuit and an egg. That's what happens. Wow. 
Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I like the smell of coffee, but uh, yes, I do like tea. I and drink thank tea. You, Alex. Yeah, I drink tea. What's your favorite type of tea? Um, I, I like uh, if I go to a, um, a coffee shop when we used to be able to do that. When I go to a coffee shop, I'd usually get like a chai tea or a black tea. Um, those are kind of my favorites. Yeah, chai tea is pretty good. Chai it's, tea is pretty good. Yeah. I did go to my friend's house one time, and she said, "You want a chai tea?" But I mean. For chai tea for me, I shove like a chai tea bag into some milk and heat it up on the stove. Where with her, she like put spices and a little satchel and it was like a whole process and a whole different creation. It was delicious. I should say the book starts in 1869 and it goes to 1897. Somebody said, well, the first plastic came out in 1897. Well, that's, we start getting into uh, later dates like 1892 or 1896. Um, so that would make sense that they were probably pushing their new invention of plastic uh, around that time. But uh, yeah, it starts in 1869 and goes up to, um, I guess, 1898 is the last entry in here. It's, I think, Thanks. a lot of one cup milk, two cups water, sugar, chai, tea bag. Yeah. That's yeah. basically what I do too. That's fun. I don't, why? Why? I don't know why I smelt it. It doesn't smell like an old book. It doesn't stink that bad, is what I'm saying. You know, when, uh, what, so we had Alexander's mom, Linda, over today. And she said she really looks forward to, just remind me when you smell the book, when we go to, like when she gets to go to a greenhouse and that smell, when you first go in a greenhouse, all the flowers and the fresh plants, oh, I'm really looking forward to that too. Oh yeah. <laughs> Not the smell of old book, but you, so you like tea. It feels like people are like, you know, team tea or tea, team coffee. I like both, but I prefer coffee over tea. I'll drink both, but mm. I prefer coffee. Do you think there's a Thai tea place that serves chai tea? That'd be confusing. And then had it, your order would be really slow. Yeah, jasmine tea's good. <laughs> what did you, oh. I said if oh. it's Thai chi chai tea, and they'd be like, what? Because they move super slow, right? Yeah. Because it's all refined. Yeah. Fresh cedar smells great. I agree. I like that too. Yeah. I love scarlet. Oh, um, somebody asked, if you have any questions, now's the time. Oh yeah. We'll, we'll give it a few more minutes before we log off here, but we'll ask them. Yeah. I've not, April, I've not had any coffee. But thanks again. I'll, I'll keep, I appreciate it. You can ask me how many times I've, I've had coffee. I've not had coffee. <laughs> um, like, yeah, looking forward to summer. I see a lot of people talking about spring. Anyway, um, we'll probably do a live feed where we do a normal chat. This video is mainly about the life hacks and stuff, so we're going to cap it off. Well, will we serve coffee and snacks in the new building, like a coffee shop? No, not right now. We don't it have. Is, it's harder to to actually serve food. Is a different thing. You need different licensing and also a different. Um, I mean, you just have to get your food and. That's why everything food. everything we have for foods at the store right now is uh, prepackaged or pre-made, so it can it just go off the It has to be made from a company. Like it has to be from an actual. It can't just be from somebody's kitchen yeah so we will chat with you guys again soon i appreciate you taking the time today to be a little bit silly with mainly me and melissa who puts up with me you guys are like in melissa's shoes today you're unwillingly putting up with me <laughs> no they're all still here i still see them all in here they're still here yes it says there's 1242 people watching right now oh well that's an awful lot of folks um so <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> thank you for watching um more episodes more adventure Oh, I got the hiccups. I better have some sugar soaked in vinegar to get rid of those hiccups. <laughs> oh, if I had a sugar cube, we could test it right now. Yeah, apparently there's a lot more things we can do with eggs that I didn't know about. I can clean dresses with potatoes now. <laughs> Remind me to go and- uh, No, ruin. You just both said ruin. That's why you no, couldn't do it. No, rub potatoes on, if you have, if you you we're outside. Rub, you know. If you get dirt on your dress, rub a potato on it. A cl I guess a, a sliced potato. I like, I'm one part. of those people that doesn't know better. I will wear a dress during the day and be out in my garden weeding. So that's an actual thing that could happen. <laughs> what if your dress is dirty from digging potatoes? I mean, I guess then you've got the potatoes there. You just... I'm pretty good at getting, at getting stuff out. So. And if you're at a tea party, which clearly they were implying because the lady had um, a tea saucer, uh, simply just soak your stain in gin and you know, people were, are going to think that you're an alcoholic and, and not at a tea party. Yep. That would probably work Here's though. I mean, it's just alcohol, essentially. It's just, you know, it's a clear alcohol. It'd you know, every once in a while, Alexander still gets those crazy hiccups like he got in, where were you? At Ontario? Yes, I was in Niagara Falls, which <laughs> should have been uh, wonderful. That is the most insane thing I've ever seen in my life, those hiccups. Uh, what Katerina. is Kat Katerina Von Duck? Says, you could occasionally invite a mobile coffee person. We have coffee bike guy in Hamburg. He's licensed to sell. Um, 
No, that sounds interesting. The, we were thinking maybe about food trucks or, or little vendors. Might be well, we have like our neighbor is a food truck vendor. Yeah, they're, they're donuts. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Do donuts and coffee. Maybe he could test it out in front of our house first. Yeah, we'll, uh, <laughs> we'll think about what to do next. But follow along. The store is going to be opening very soon. June 1st, we're going to be reopening. Um, I'll probably, you know, keep us uh, um, going. There's an auction going on right now that uh, is going on today and it ends on Sunday, but that has the, um, I have a, uh, speaking of books, we have the original copy of the Warren Commission signed by Gerald Ford. Oh. Um, I didn't even know you put that on there. Well, yeah, because JFK, uh, as we know, was assassinated. Um, Gerald Ford was on the Warren Commission. I'm not I'm gonna put people think about the conspiracies there, but um, he later became president when Richard Nixon got impeached. So it's kind of, it's, president who was on the Warren Commission. Anyway, it's an odd thing. Uh, that's up at Castner Auctions right now. Anyway, guys, you have a wonderful day. Matthew Fox, thank you so much for being such a wonderful moderator. And thank you all for following along, uh, having a little fun with us tonight. And hopefully we'll see you all very soon. Uh, oh, yes, Nixon. I'm sorry. He wasn't impeached. He was worried about being impeached. He resigned before that happened. Yes, thank you. My, my American history is almost there. I knew that fact. I just misquoted myself. I apologize. But uh, yes, Gerald Ford did become the president uh, after Richard Nixon resigned. Resigned, did not get impeached. Anyway, self-corrected. Anyway, um, so you guys have a wonderful night. Uh, we'll see you guys all very soon and have a wonderful day. Bye for now. Bye, everyone. Bye.